Hello, welcome back to Injection Molding Support Sessions. I'm your host, Brandon Birchmeyer. Uh, today we're going to do a reaction video to a November 2023 Plastics Technology article uh, written by my good friend Suhas Kokarni called, Is There a More Accurate Means to Calculate Tonnage? Phenomenal article. I highly recommend you read it. Suhas does something that I love in our industry, kind of going against conventional um, thought process and suggesting test and her scientific approaches to figuring out optimum processing settings. And Suhas just do, does just that. And he, and he covers first kind of the oversimplification that projected area has on tonnage determination. There's a lot more that can impact your tonnage requirement than just projected area alone. Think of things like uh, flow length, gate location, obviously part design, and ultimately the pressure needed to fill your part out and how that impacts the tonnage needed to keep your parting line closed. And Suhas provides a really cool tool for kind of um, figuring out tonnage, uh, you know, using a, a hive tonnage setting. And then again, once you establish your process, reducing tonnage to start seeing changes in say part dimensions or part weight. Again, a methodical, systematic, specific uh, approach to determine optimum uh, tonnage for your application. Um, I also kind of want to touch on another relationship that I think is really neat uh, when you think about uh, injection molded parts. I'm going to show you up here. So let's go to the whiteboard. Um, what I have here is two examples. So first one, think of this as a Frisbee center gated and this uh, a bucket or container also center gated with this diameter being identical in, in both of these parts. Again, if I were to use my projected area calculation, it would say these parts need the same tonnage, but we know that's not truth, right? Common sense tells us, listen, this flow length that I need to achieve um, has just as much impact on the tonnage required in this instance um, <laughs> versus uh, the, the Frisbee um, example. And one way I like to look at kind of um, these relationships is uh, uh, something I've, I've used, I don't know if I've seen this published anywhere, but it's, it's looking at screw travel versus flow front surface area. And in my first example here is it, as the, I go from my small circle, my gate, to the outer edges of that Frisbee, my surface area, my flow front is growing exponentially, right? This exponential growth in flow front surface area as the screw moves forward in the process. And what I've drawn up here is kind of what that, in, you know, your injection molding graph would look like. So uh, blue being screw position. So uh, as I'm moving the flow front forward, screw position decreases to achieve tonnage. I'm using a constant velocity here. Then I'm kind of predicting what my plastic pressure would do in this scenario. And what's happening is I'm not building a lot of pressure because this full front surface area is growing exponentially. I don't build a lot of pressure at a constant velocity in this scenario. Um, so again, pressure first versus the tonnage you needed to keep this mold closed. I'm not building a lot of pressure because again of this relationship. Now, if I go over to my container bucket example, Again, up front, I, I have a similar relationship, right? I am filling, going from the small gate to the large um, bottom surface of the circle. And however, as soon as I, you know, turn the corner, as I like to say, or, or start going down the sidewalls, I see a dramatic shift in that relationship. You know, a, a big decrease in that surface area that is then maintained down the length of that part. And two things, kind of relationships I like to look at is if I'm building minimal pressure, um, I'm gonna have less tonnage requirements, right? So during this first phase, I, I, don't, I don't expect to build a lot of pressure. However, as, I, as I'm maintaining that surface area and I'm continuing to move the flow front forward in this pattern, I can expect to create pressure. And that's what I'm kind of representing here. Again, uh, constant velocity, screw, screw position moving uh, linearly, plastic pressure, not much built, um, as I'm molding the, the backside of the bucket. However, as I go down the sidewalls, I start increasing pressure, right, during this scenario. So again, a lot more pressure required in this relationship, which tells me I'm gonna need more tonnage. Another way, neat way to kind of look at these, uh, I like to use these, is thinking about how I may want to profile my velocity. If I see these opportunities where, I'm, where my flow front surface area is growing rather dramatically, that's when I like to go fast. If you can, generate speed or velocity without generating pressure, man, take advantage of it. And early in this process, I can go quite fast because I'm taking advantage of the flow front surface area growing and knowing I'm not gonna build a lot of pressure early on. However, I'm 
probably interested in slowing, you know, once I start turning the corner and going down the sidewalls, right? As pressure is maintained or speeds maintained, my pressure is going to start growing. So I may want to profile into a, a lower velocity here to try to control that ramping of that, of that uh, pressure. Again, take advantage of, of speed when you can, uh, especially if you don't think you're going to build pressure in those scenarios. Those are areas where I like to go really fast and really take advantage of the shear thinning uh, properties of the polymer. Um, so again, just a quick overview. I want to talk about Sue Haas's awesome article. Another way to think about uh, how your part uh, geometry can impact your, <laughs> your, your pressure requirements and ultimately your tonnage requirements. And think differently about how you may want to approach that process when you kind of think about these relationships as well. So if you haven't read the article, highly recommend it. It's a great article by Sue Haas. Thank you for joining me today. And a quick plug in for myself, Birchmeyer uh, Plastic Solutions. If your facility needs any injection help, training, troubleshooting support, um, helping with the efficiencies, bringing in recycled resin, please reach out. We'd love to help you. Please like and subscribe. And thanks for joining me today. We'll talk to you soon.